right of your screen. Teletubby, Tinky Winky, he's loving it. However, Tinky's not gonna like this later in the quarter and the Rouge et Or tie things up as Pascal Lechard scrambles in for six and now things are all evened up at 22 early in the fourth and Laval dashes the Gators' hopes of an upset as B-squared Boris Beatty nails this 41-yarder. That puts the visitors on top to stay. Laval escapes with a six-point victory. Jordan Heather left the game with an injury after just two passes. However, word is he will play next week versus the Montreal Caribans. And speaking of those Caribans, they continued their early dominance with a 48-10 win over Concordia. Rotor and Senny, in true form, rushed for 112 yards and one major for Montreal. As expected, Laval and Montreal are both 2-0 to start the season. Sherbrooke joins Concordia with a win apiece, while McGill and Bishops are still winless. We'll wrap things up now in the Atlantic Canada. St. Mary's on the road to face Acadia and we may just have the play of the year here to start things out. With no time remaining in the first half, Jameek Taylor chops his way through the X-Men defense, taking it to the house. It's a 114 yard strike. That gave the Huskies a 9-7 lead, but it wouldn't stand up. Acadia would put together a mighty comeback. Not only did St. Mary's lose the game on the scoreboard, they also lost on the depth chart. Starting QB Jack Creighton didn't see the field again after getting pasted by Brett Backman, who puts it into overdrive. Acadia takes care of business and starts its season off with a nice shiny W. 21-16 is your final. X-Men's QB Kyle Graves showed that attending Alouette's camp clearly helped his game with a massive 363 yards through the air. Elsewhere in the AUS in Sackville, New Brunswick, about a quarter of the population turned up to see its Mounties get hammered by St. Effects, a 51-5 drubbing. Ashton, don't call me Kutcher Dixon with a huge game rushing for 150 yards on 28 carries with one major. Here's how the standings look after one week of action on the Far East Coast. Acadian FX are atop the leaderboard. Keep in mind the AUS and RSQ will face off next week in interlock play. Not a bad way to start the year, Mr. Andrew Wadden. Not bad. I mean, I played a lot like Laval yourself. Mm, maybe more like Ottawa. Keep in mind my seat doesn't go quite as high. <laughs> and it shouldn't. I'm the wily old veteran. There you go. Another wily old veteran. Back to you, Jim. When we return, we will preview the CIS season and we will take a look at UBC Shea Emery now with the Alouettes. Crown Produce supplying select Canadian retailers. Crown Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw. Welcome back to Crown Canadian University Countdown. I'm Ryan Sullivan. We'd like to introduce you to a new segment of the show we like to call Pro Profiles, where you check out some CIS success stories and how they're doing in the CFL and NFL. Today we're going to head over to Montreal and check out Shea Emery, a linebacker and former UBC Thunderbird. When you talk good young Canadians in the CFL, odds are one of the first names that will come to mind these days is that of young Shea Emery. The 6-foot, 220-pound Richmond, B.C. native has made a name for himself in his first few years on the job in the Canadian Football League. Even though he started his collegiate career south of the line in the NCAA with Eastern Washington, after a year Emery got homesick and he decided to finish his college days in the Canada West with UBC. You know, overall it's one of those decisions that, you know, you make those decisions in your life and uh, you got to move on with them because, you know, you are where you are and you are where you are because of the person you were and the person you are today. The person he is today on the field is an absolute beast. He's tallied nearly 200 tackles in his first five years of work, along with seven sacks and two gray cups. Emery plays the game with heart, which no doubt is one of the many traits that he's picked up from some of his mentors along the way. You know, Angus Reed, who I go up against every year now, uh, went to the same church as I did, and uh, so I looked up to him, and, and uh, we also went to the same high school, so there was a lot of, you know, obviously looking up to those guys, and, uh, you know, Obviously now, 
being being a, a bit of rival on Labor on the Labor Day Classic, it's it's a fun thing to enjoy. With over 50 tackles this season, Emery is on pace for a career year in the blue and red. While his resume only lists a few games in UBC colors, he hasn't forgotten the lessons he learned playing in the CIS. Going to UBC was uh, was great because I gained the, the Canadian knowledge of the, the knowledge of the Canadian game and, and allowed me to transfer into the CFL very easily. And uh, you know, with regards to the CFL, it's you know it has the speed of the, the NCAA, but also the dynamic of the, the Canadian game, and uh, that's why it's such a great game. Let's keep these new segment debuts going. We're going to kick off a new feature now. This one's called Inside the CIS with this guy, Mr. Connor Hammond. You know, routes were the theme, Ryan, of early season action. And taking these score lines into consideration, here are my top six squads of 2012. And surprise, surprise, there's some usual suspects. The Marauders, after spending the offseason celebrating their Vanier Cup championship, feel the strong squad aiming to repeat. Quarterback and the Vanier Cup MVP, Kyle Quinlan, will be back after he flirted with joining the CFL in the offseason. McMaster has already missed some of their key ingredients this year due to injuries to OUA MVP wideout Michael DeCroce, as well as last year's leading rusher, Chris Pizzetta. The strength of this year's team lies in its offensive line that returns in full force, as does a secondary that was tops in the CAS in interceptions last season. It will be no easy ride for the Marauders in the OUA as the Western Mustangs are looking to get revenge after getting soundly beaten by McMaster in the Yates Cup Final. Donnie Marshall returns for his fifth year to quarterback the squad, hoping to kick the injury bug that plagued his 2011 campaign. He's a strong group of playmakers to work with as Marshall's brother Brian and Andre Thibodeau will be on the receiving end of the Mustangs' aerial attack. The class of the CAS in the past 10 years has been Laval as they have been in six of the past 10 Vanier Cups. Head coach Glenn Constantin's 2012 squad will be taking a heavy hit as both quarterback Bruno Prudhomme and running back Sebastian Levesque graduated. While Laval only has nine starters returning this year, defensively they still have a devastating pass rush, as well as linebacker Freddie Profsus returning to wreak havoc on the opposition. The Montreal Caravan under head coach Danny Machocha looked poised to dethrone Laval at the top of the RSEQ standings. Offensively, running back Rotran Sene is the straw that stirs Montreal's offensive drink. The ground attack perfectly complements the passing of fifth-year senior Alexander Nedopios. Nedopios and the Caravans have started strong in the 2012 season with a 2-0 record. The University of Calgary appeared to be the team to beat in the Canada West Conference. The Dinos open the year ranked third in the CIS and are looking to win their fifth straight Hardy Cup. Their primary offensive weapons include quarterback Eric Dolesky, who's in his second year behind center, and running back Stephen Lombala. Lombala, in particular, will hope to continue the form that saw him finish fourth in rushing yards in the CIS last season. The Regina Rams have proven already in 2012 to be tough competition for the Dinos out west. Mark Mueller is considered by some to be the strongest quarterback in the conference. Defensively, they have a team that loves to swarm the opposition's QB. The defensive backfield is filled with Bahawks, most notably corner Jameer Walker and his 16 career CIS interceptions. Come November 23rd, the Rogers Centre in Toronto will play host to two battle-tested squads who will try and top last season's epic final. All right, now that we know the teams a little bit, we're going to turn things over to a roundtable discussion. We welcome back Jim Mellon and Andrew Wadden. Now, first up, Jim, let's talk a little Canada West. Outside of the, the clear favorites, of course, you know Calgary's going to be up there, but who's standing out to you right now, and who's sleeping and could make some noise a little later in the year? Well, Regina was already mentioned in the piece, but I think the Saskatchewan Huskies and the Manitoba Bisons both have to be seriously looked at in this race. First of all, with the Saskatchewan Huskies, you have Drew Burko coming over from junior to lead the offense at that quarterback position. I think he's fully capable. And then on the defensive side, they may have the best front seven in the Canada West. And then they have some speedsters in the secondary with young Keenan Arnyuk, uh, Luke Teal, and then, of course, 
the CIS interception leader, at least the active CIS interception leader in Bryce McCall, who currently stands at 20 interceptions. The Manitoba Bisons, they have a number of weapons. Anthony Coombs is the guy that comes to mind. He was Team World MVP in the International Bowl versus the United States. Nick Dembski is also in there, and uh, Kiernan LaFrance is also uh, in this group uh, of guys that can really carry the ball and do some damage. I think UBC could be on the rocks, however. Uh, Billy Green injured last week. He is going to be day-to-day -day and questionable as we go through the season, and the center of that defense has a big gap in it with a number of injuries. So I think UBC may be the odd man out when it comes to playoffs. Okay, now let's go across the country a little bit. Mr. Wadden, we'll keep it formal as we did at the top of the show. Uh, let's check out the OUA. Outside of the clear favorites, who's making waves right now? Queens has got to be looked at. They are the Golden Gales, the Gales, whatever you want to call them this season. Ryan Granberg, Billy McPhee, Justin Chapdelaine. Three guys you got to look out for on offense. Three potent attacks when it comes to Queens' offense. Now, looking at their defense, 10 starters re returning this season, so you got to look at Queens. However, Western is going to be there. They're going to feel the loss of Tyler Varga. However, they do have Garrett Sanvito, who can fill some pretty big shoes that Varga has left behind. But it all comes down to the reigning champions, and that's the Marauders from McMaster. Kyle Quinlan and the boys, even without Michael DeCrochet, who's injured right now at the moment, he will return this regular season. And as much as you got to like Queens, who will face McMaster in week four, you got to watch out for those Marauders. Absolutely. Now let's head over to Quebec, check things out over there. We're going to welcome to the show from Acrofoot.com, J.P. Choiré. Now we saw in our last feature there, J.P., that Laval and Montreal, of course, making a little bit of noise. But what about your former school there, Sherbrooke? Uh, what are their odds looking like this year? Yeah, well, you ask if, uh, if uh, the Sherbrooke is going to be competitive. Well, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, you know, they, they, they're going to be competitive week in and week out. They have a new coaching staff, but it comes from within the organization, which uh, brings a lot of continuity to the team. Uh, on offense, you know, it's still David Lassau, who's now the head coach. Well, he's been the, the offensive coordinator for the past five years, and he keeps uh, his run going with uh, second-year quarterback, Jeremy Rock, who's uh, probably one of the best in the country. It's not the same receiving group that they had last year. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, SCC, uh, two-time uh, MVP here in Quebec, Ismail Bamba, a one-year wonder for Sherbrooke, who made... Who made a lot of great plays. So, so they're good at receiver. A lot of a, long, a lot of young kids. Uh, a lot of speed at receiver. But there's definitely not that same size advantage on the outside. So, so it's 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 been difficult for them to hit that deep ball, uh, which was uh, one of the very biggest success in these past years. But but, but the, their biggest upgrade this season has been on the D line. You know, the Sherbrooke has always lacked that top defensive lineman, and uh, they have a good trio uh, in the in the middle. You know, defensive tackles. Uh, you talk about Rami saint Sainte-Sus and Mathieu Gastongue, but uh, it's the addition of uh, Jean-Christophe Gagnon, a transfer from Bishop, who had to sit out last year, that might have the biggest impact. And uh, talking about big impact, uh, William Dion, the kicker, uh, fifth-year kicker, you know, can be he can be the best in the conference, maybe one of be one of the best in the country, so he can make a huge difference for Sherbrooke this year. All right, now let's head over to the AUS. Some clear favorites over there. What are we thinking? Uh, Acadia. Acadia, yeah, Acadia. I, I think there's uh, little doubt that uh, Acadia is the top of the pops out there right now with SMU rebuilding and Jack Creighton injured, as we saw earlier uh, in the program, and Kyle Graves clearly the top of the class there. I was expecting some heated debate. That's why I said no, favorites. No, no, we're, we're not going to fight about this. No, either. favorites is what I should have went <laughs> yeah, with, no one. question. There is one team and one team only. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, JP, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, can you give us a plug on your way out there? Well, thanks for having me uh, aboard. And, uh, you know, make sure to follow me on Twitter at JP Chouari and uh, to, uh, follow our website as well, uh, echofoot.com. Thanks. Beautiful. Thanks again, JP. Thank you to you guys, Jim and Andrew, for joining me on the table. Now let's check out the big board. The CIS top 10 ranks, as expected, McMaster getting all 30 votes. They're at the top of the board. All right. That should do it. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Thanks to our crew. You guys did a great job. And once again, you can find us on Facebook.com slash CIS on Shaw. Of course, on Twitter at CIS Countdown. I'm Ryan Sullivan. We'll see you next week.
Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw.